For question number three, the correct option is option two. And to show the steps of solution, let me draw the figure given in the question. But I shall show you two situations, the initial situation in which there are just two blocks. This is situation one. This one is block one, say, of mass M1. And this is a block two of mass M2. And a string joining them runs over a pulley at the corner of this table. And this block that is put later on block number two and called M, that is not shown in situation number one. Let me take it away. Another figure at later stage to stop the motion of the system, that figure is this one. Let me put them side by side. And in this case, well, let me write it here. This is the mass M2. This is the mass M1 in blue color. So this is mass M1. This is mass M2. A later stage, another block of unknown mass M in gray color is put on block number two so that the motion is eventually stopped. That is situation number two. The question is to find this unknown mass. We are given here that some data, let me write it M1, that is 5 kg, M2, that is 10 kg, and the coefficient of kinetic friction between the bottom of block number 2 in red color and the horizontal surface of the tabletop that coefficient is given to be 0 0.15 this kinetic because initially the system is moving block one goes downwards block two is going towards right so to show the steps of solution here now so in step one we consider situation one and draw the free body diagrams of these two blocks but the block of mass M1, the forces acting on it are the force of gravity acting vertically downwards and the force of tension given by the string vertically upwards. I choose positive y direction vertically downwards and suppose the acceleration of the block is A downwards shown by this red arrow. So this is acceleration vector, this is the plus y direction downwards. For the block one force of gravity is M1G and the force of tension is T. Similarly, we draw the FBD for this block two of mass M2. The forces are the force of gravity acting vertically downwards, the normal force given by the tabletop vertically upwards, the force of tension given by the string horizontally rightwards and the force of kinetic friction acting at the bottom horizontally leftwards to resist the motion and the acceleration under these forces must be the same A in magnitude in the rightward direction as you can see from the figure going to the right going down both with the same magnitude of acceleration which is a constrained motion this acceleration's magnitude is A this force is M2G, this is the normal force N, this is the force of tension, this is the force of kinetic friction, Fk, isn't it? And you choose the coordinate axis, plus x axis pointing rightwards, plus y axis pointing vertically upwards. You can write now, equation of motion of mass M1, the downward direction, that equation is, M1G minus T is equal to M1 into A. That is my equation number one. Similarly, equation of motion of mass M2 in the plus X direction, that will be T minus FK is equal to M2 into A. This is equation number two. I can also write here equation of Y motion that is n is equal to m to g but wait for a moment we'll come back to that shortly we have got two equations of motion let us add them next 
in step number two, we add up these two equations, one and two. So just adding up equation one and two. You can see here that T's cancel out and we have got M1G minus FK that is equal to M1 plus M2 into A, isn't it? So in the initial situation, when there were only two blocks, this acceleration is positive and the system keeps moving. That is block one downwards and the block two towards right. Situation changes now. If the put, as you can see in this figure, another block mass M that is unknown onto the block number two, the question is for what minimum value of M? This motion eventually stops. The motion eventually stops only when this acceleration A becomes negative. So the velocity of the system decreases eventually to zero and the system comes to a stop. So the condition is for the system to stop is this will happen only when A is less than zero because that decelerates the motion. This will give us M1G minus FK dash that is less than zero. I'm calling it FK dash for distinction because FK was the fiction at the bottom in situation one. FK dash is the fiction in the new situation when the block M is put on M2. And this has to be less than zero if A has to be less than zero. This is giving me that FK dash has to be greater than M1G, isn't it? Now what is this FK dash in this new situation? Now look at it once again clearly. I'll explain it with another figure. I show you here the forces coming into play between M2 and M when M is put on that. What are the forces acting in the vertical direction? One is the force of gravity on M2. Another is force of gravity on M. Another is the normal force given by M2 on M upwards. And then a reaction of that normal force on M2. And finally, the normal force given by the tabletop on M2, isn't it? Once again, this is the M2G, the force of gravity on block number two. This is MG, force of gravity on block M. This is the normal force N dash given on block M by M2 to balance its force of gravity MG to give it equilibrium. As a result of that, a reaction force, normal force given by block M on M2 downwards, that is also N dash. So N dash and M2G acting downwards, and they should be balanced by the total normal force N given by the tabletop on block number two. Understand this, if I can write it. This is M2G. This is, I'm calling it N dash, the normal force between block two and block M. This is N, the normal force given by the tabletop on block number two. After this block M was put on M2, let us find the normal force given by the tabletop on block number two. So I have separated this block M and see equilibrium under two forces. One is MG, force of gravity. One is the normal force N dash given by M2 on M. They have to be equal. So N dash is equal to small MG. And the block two, block M2's equilibrium happens in the upward direction, vertical direction under three forces. One is M2G, the force of gravity on it. One is the N dash normal force given by the block M. This N dash being equal to MG and the upward normal force given by the tabletop. Therefore, for the equilibrium in the vertical direction, we can write down that in this new situation, the normal force acting on mass M2 is N dash plus M2G, but N dash has to be equal to mg for the equilibrium of mass m. So it's mg plus m2g 
this is coming out to be m plus m2 into g. Look at the difference. In situation number one, if you look at this figure, normal force n is simply equal to m to g. And the law of kinetic friction, fk is mu k times n, that is mu k into m2 into g. And that was small value, so acceleration was positive. In the new situation, when the block m is put, normal force on block 2, m2, has gone up. It has become m plus m2 into g, corresponding frictional force now fk dash, given by law of kinetic friction, that is mu k times this value, and that is greater than this m1g to create deceleration and finally to bring it to a stop. So you can write down, by the law of kinetic friction, if n is this, fk dash must be mu k times this normal force in new situation, that is mu k times m plus m2 into g. And this has to be greater than m1g. The system has to come to a stop. g is cancelling out from here. You can show that this unknown mass m has to be greater than m1 upon mu k minus m2. Now what is this value? m1 was given to be 5 kg, mu k is given to be 0 0.15, m2 is given to be 10 kg. This coming out to be, you can check it, this coming out to be 23.3 kg. So you see that the mass to be put on m2 should exceed 23.3 kg. And of our choices, the second choice too, which says 27.3 kg, that would be the minimum mass of M2 and hence we conclude that our correct option is option 2.